Hey guys, it's Kylie and in today's video I'm going to share a history of Disney pins. So today I'm going to go through some of the history of Disney pins and where Disney pin trading came from, where Disney pin trading started, and some of the major events that helped turn Disney pin trading into what it is today. But if you guys are interested in more Disney videos just like this, definitely subscribe button, turn the bell so you get notified every time I upload as post tons of Disney content on this channel. So some of this information is from research I've done and then some of this information did come from a panel uh, about Disney pin trading history that happened during the 20 years of pin trading virtual event. So I do have information from both and I put all the information together to share with you today. So Disney pins have been around for a long time and Disney pins were around before what we all know as the Millennium Celebration where Disney pin trading really started. They did sell pins before then but there wasn't the trading element to it and they didn't sell them on the crazy volume that they sell them obviously today. Pin trading really started for the Millennium Celebration and the creation of Pin Central at Epcot. They had to get funding for the Pin Central so they created these pins sets that were like a collage element and they weren't able to sell all of the pin sets that they had created and actually ended up in a deficit from that and had to just kind of get rid of all the extras that they had. However, pin trading still picked up and became very popular and everybody really liked the idea and that still was able to start and they were able to get Pin Central and start pin trading. Disney studies its ideas when it comes up with something. So for pin trading, they went to sporting events and other communities that did something similar to pin trading and tested out the waters to see how popular it was and they found it was very popular at these different events and wanted to take their own spin on it. Disney really liked the idea of pin trading because it allowed for a way for guests to connect with cast members and there to be an interaction between these cast members and the guests on a daily and a regular basis. So it allowed for more one-to-one -one interaction and it allowed Disney to make the experience special to different guests. So it really started with they created a 2000 millennium pin and they gave it out to people at their hotels. So if you were staying with a package, you got this pin and you were told to just go trade it in the parks and you could trade it for any character you want. And once people found out that they could trade, okay, this pin for that wasn't really that popular and there was tons of them and it wasn't kind of plain and bland, they could trade it for a favorite character. Then pin trading took off. People wanted to get more pins. They wanted to trade them for fancier characters, nicer pins, whatever they felt like they wanted in their collection. And pin trading did start at Epcot with the Pin Central and then grew across Disney World and then eventually did grow to Disneyland and across the world. Pin trading was actually very popular when it grew to Tokyo Disneyland. It got so popular it ended up turning into almost kind of like the pin event that everybody and the pin trading nights that everybody lays out their stuff. People were laying out blankets in the center of Tokyo Disneyland with all their pins trying to trade that it actually kind of got overwhelming and because Oriental Trading Company partly owned Tokyo Disneyland they decided to cut out pin trading. They felt like it was turning Disney World into like a flea market style with all these people laying out in the hub with their blankets so they cut off pin trading and they still don't have pin trading in Tokyo Disney anymore but they did work and it is still very popular in the international parks um, but Tokyo Disneyland currently doesn't have any pin trading. So expanding from just the traditional open edition pins Disney looked into limited edition pins because they felt like some of the top collectors would want to get this and the special limited run pins would encourage people to come to the parks and get those pins. They felt like pin collectors and those that were really into this would want to go to events so they created some of the Epcot events as they started right from 2000. They had both pin trading weekends and the big events and pin trading nights and then they did expand them just around from Epcot to the other parks because now all the other parks wanted to have their own events so they had events in Animal Kingdom, they had events in Magic Kingdom, Hollywood Studios, they expanded out on where the pin trading was. One way that they sold the limited edition pins, not the way they do it now with like first things on the morning on Thursdays you could go get a pin. They would just release them at random times at random places so like Pin Central at like two o'clock on a Tuesday would release some limited edition pins so it encouraged people to stay in the parks all day to possibly also get a pin release that day. And then Hidden Mickeys came along. So Hidden Mickey started as Cast Lanyard series so there'd be pins just on like the Cast Lanyards and you'd be able to trade for them. That's the only way you can get a Hidden Mickey. So as Cast Lanyard series some of the executives would be walking around Disney with lanyards and people would come up with them and say, do you have any of the cast lanyard pins? And they wouldn't understand which ones were that. So that's when Disney decided to take that little silver hidden Mickey and put them on the pins and make it so that both the cast members and the guests would be able to say, okay, that's a hidden Mickey pin and a cast lanyard pin when somebody asked for it. So that allowed them to be able to specify which ones were those and which ones you could only get from trading on the lanyards. Now for chaser pins, they came along during the 40th anniversary of Haunted Mansion pin 
an event at Disneyland. They created a mystery set and they added in 40 pins that had a red back to them. So the metal on the back was red and people were very confused when they first opened the box and then they realized that they were even rarer, that they were chaser pins special. There was only a limited number of them. So people rushed to get more boxes of them because they wanted that special pins and that's when chaser pins took off. So Disney then added chaser pins to a lot of different sets to make that rarer pin in the mystery set to encourage people to get the mystery set. Being able to have an interaction element along with a merchandise element allows a lot of opportunities for Disney. They're able to get guests to interact with other cast members and with other guests along with being able to sell merchandise which is a money maker for Disney. Over time Disney has realized that certain pins have more trading power than others and has created lots of pins with different trading power. Obviously some low LE older pins have a lot of different trading power compared to some newer pins, open edition, and they definitely figure out which characters are more popular and would last longer in an open edition pin versus which characters are a little bit more rare and have a higher trading power that they can make into a limited edition pin. Disney knows that there is value of these pins outside of the value you pay for in the parks and definitely tries to encourage the market to continue get people interested in pin trading and to continue to grow people's pin collections. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video with a little bit of history of where pin trading came from and how it grew in the parks. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any other history facts about pin trading and Disney pins or if you have a favorite Disney pin uh, from the Millennium Celebration or an old Disney pins. I would love to hear that in the comments down below but I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Don't forget to like if you did and I'll see you guys later. Bye!